G'day Spurs fans, Paul the Hotspur Hippie here, the only psychedelic soccer show on the internet. And uh, today it's going to be a bit more hippie than Hotspur, a bit off topic. Uh, but something has happened that makes this relevant. So uh, <coughs> it gives me a chance to explain a bit more of my world view about things. Now the story is that uh, Rodrigo Bentoncourt uh, made a racist comment about Hyung Min Son. He's since apologised. He's since apologised. Um, and there's been reaction. Um, people have been, some people have been condemning Bentoncourt. And some people have been, uh, you know, trumpeting the, the whole anti-woke, um, you can't say anything, freedom of speech, it's just a joke sort of thing. So I just wanted to give you a bit of, a bit of context around these things. Um, <clears throat> and a bit of context around uh, racism and bigotry in general. Uh, you don't have to take my word for some of these things, go and look it up yourself. Um, I believe that human beings left to their own devices without any external persuasion are good people. And what I mean in essence by someone being good is having empathy. You know, most of us do. About 99% of us do. If you see someone getting a paper cut, you wince. You know what I mean? We relate to other people. And so, as uh, popula you know, population started growing around the planet, um, and people, I guess, became a bit less connected with each other, it opened the door, and I'm talking about thousands and thousands of years ago, I don't know when this started, I don't know when it started. Um, it opened the door for people without empathy to take advantage. When I say people without empathy, I'm specifically referring to people with uh, certain anti-social behaviour or, or, or personality disorders such as sociopathy, psychopathy, narcissism. They, they would be my big three. The, these, these people <coughs> lack empathy. Their only driver is to fulfil their own needs. Nothing else that happens to anyone else matters. And it's quite a hard concept to, to get your head around. I know it is for me, and it's one of those things I've kind of learned in life is, I have empathy for my fellow man. And when I say man, I'm not, I don't mean that in a gender way. I call everyone man, I call my daughters man, you know. Um, uh, these people are, I've learned actually, sorry, I learned that um, it is actually pointless to have empathy for people with no empathy because their, their thought processes are, are so um, restricted from what I think a normal human being is. It's just impossible. It's just impossible. You cannot reason with them. You cannot persuade them because at the end their only driver is themselves. Now. This, uh, this leads to the growth of power structures, power structures around the world, systems of, of government. Don't, I'm going to get to my point, bear with me. Uh, systems of government, monarchies or communism or democracy or, or monetary mechanisms such as capitalism. Uh, what is a, an easy way for a person with psychopathy to uh, have power over others because that's what ultimately they want. It's their way or no way. Well, you take away what they've got and you give them just a bit back enough so that they love you. Perhaps you're very charismatic. Now, luckily, a lot of psychopaths <laughs> don't properly function in society, but some do, some learn. Some are very smart and can mimic uh, what I would call normal behavior. And so when you have a... We, I'm talking about now, I'm, I'm going on to the European times, European times, the rise of the European powers. As I said, I believe that everyone left to their own devices has no hatred for anyone else and just wants to see the benefit of everyone as a whole. 
So if you're a European power, then how do you persuade your population that it is okay to go into another part of the world and absolutely decimate, enslave, and steal all their resources? Well, this is where I get to racism, my friends. Sometimes racism appears to have a compassionate approach, particularly early on in the uh, days of empire, where you would, and I, I still hear this phrase today, and I'm, I'm shocked I hear it actually, that we the British people are civilizing these people in the world, we're helping them. Because without any overall um, societal pressure that, in, that inhibits people's capacity to empathize with other people, these people have no power. So you have to have an overwhelming uh, view that allows that to happen. So you can say that we're civilizing them. You can even then say, well, you know, there's certain scientific di differences between people of different, what they call races. Probably less intelligent. Uh, maybe more brutal, you know, uh, violent. None of these things are true. None of these things are true. And language is an incredibly important part of this, an incredibly important part of this. Like I said, sometimes it's got the, the fake mask of compassion. Sometimes it is out and out hatred. We've seen that in history. We still see it today. Um, and Language is a very important part of this. And it's amazing how pervasive, incredibly racist terms have just uh, become normalized in society. I'll give you a couple of examples of what I mean here. I know I'm meandering around a bit. This is a, this is a subject I've thought a lot about, but I still find it hard to uh, put into words. Um, but I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you an example. So. There's a phrase that we've all used, and you probably don't, aren't aware that this has racist origins. In fact, I only found this out a few weeks ago. So, you know, always try and live and learn, always try and be a bit better, a bit compassionate. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to give you some sort of, I'm not, gonna, I'm, I'm not trying to speak from a, a position of moral superiority, because what I'm, dis what I'm describing here are things that have shaped and affected my life. For instance, you know, when I was a kid, there was a, there was a suite called Blackjacks and it had a, uh, you know, a derogatory blackface doll on it. And when that was banned and changed, there was uproar. I remember at the time it was uproar. Oh, it's not that, it's not racist. It's just this, it's just that. And now you look back and you think, bloody hell, bloody hell. So there's me, a little kid. There's loads of members of society that have been persuaded that that was okay that that was ah, it's just a bit of fun. It's, uh, it's always been that way. No point in changing it. We don't like change. We don't like change. And so when things happen like that, that's where you get people saying things like, you can't say anything anymore. There's no freedom of speech. This incredible freedom of speech, man. You can say anything you want. It's just if you want to say hateful stuff, then you've got to get, you, you're going to have a bit of a problem. Because, I, you know, one thing I, I I do see as I grow older, these things are changing so slowly, so slowly, man. And there's always a different section of society uh, that gets picked on. Because like I said, people in power, like psychos, I'm talking about proper psychopaths here, uh, or narcissists, uh, the way they keep power is even if you've got hardship in your life, it's just to blame, blame that lot over there. Blame that lot. Your life is bad because of, you can, I mean, you can say it's either because of Jews or Muslims, people of color, really transgender and LGBTQIA plus people are the flavor of the month at the moment. Somehow those people are to blame for your life being shit. It makes absolutely no sense, does it? Makes no sense. So I'll give you an example. So here's a term for you. There's a term, grandfathered in. 
grandfathered in. Well, I've used it. Been, I've been in business meetings. Oh, you know, contracts change, but the, old, the people under the old uh, contract, they'll be grandfathered in. It kind of makes sense, doesn't it? It doesn't sound racist. It doesn't sound racist. It is. Because that phrase was born out of uh, post-slavery ab abolition in, in the United States. And, uh, you know, a, a few decades after, uh, <clears throat> there were some states that wanted to ensure that black people could not vote. So what they did was, they brought in rules and requirements such as literacy laws, can you read and write, which of course, if you were a slave, an emancipated slave, the chances of you passing these tests, the way they formulated them was absolutely zero. But there's a problem with that. There's a problem with that. Because also, there are also a lot of white people that wouldn't pass the tests either, you know? Back then and even now, not everyone can read and write and all that sort of stuff. And so what they did was they said, well, if your grandfather had the right to vote back when all this change happened, then you have the right to vote. Meaning white people are guaranteed to be able to vote and black people are guaranteed not to be able to vote because not one black person had the right to vote when they were a slave. And so this is what I'm saying about the power of language, folks. What many people use today as normal business language has incredibly racist roots. And I just think, I'm sure if you're a black American, there is a fair chance you would be very aware of the roots of, of that phrase. And yet, if you succeed in life, well, succeed in life, whatever that means, you get a job and you're sitting in a meeting and you hear people say grandfathered in, it's putting you in your place. It's putting you in your place. Do you really want to stand up and say, well, hang on a minute, that has racist terms? Because the people, the people that are saying these terms are not being racist. It's just the way society has brainwashed you. There is a lot of brainwashing in society. And so my, my, my thing is, now when I learned this, that grandfathered in has roots in uh, slavery, I instantly thought, well, I'm never going to say that again. There's plenty of other ways I could say that kind of thing. Legacy agreement, something like that. I don't have to say grandfathered in, and I never will. Some people, however, will say, oh, you can't say anything these days, can you? Can't say anything these days. And this is what they always say about any move that goes against the language we use that has caused Western world domination over the world that's been part of it. It's been part of the we are superior, they are inferior view of the world. Um, and it happens with other words, other words. Some are more uh, overtly racist or homophobic or Islamophobic or, or whatever you want. And I just think whenever I learn, because I've used these words, man, I'm not, this, I'm not saying I've got moral high ground at all. You know, 10, 15 years ago, I was saying all sorts of crazy, horrible shit. I didn't mean, you know, I didn't think I was necessarily. Well, maybe sometimes I did. But as time goes on and you learn more about things, you just drop them. So if you know a phrase was designed to keep a section of people down, wouldn't you have the reaction, well, I don't want to say that anymore? The people that stick their... Uh, that hold their ground on these things are exactly the sort of people I'm talking about. Psychopaths, man, psychopaths. Usually very charismatic, usually have a very specific look about them. You can't imagine them in a different set of clothes or a different hairstyle. Very charismatic, very persuasive, very persuasive. People fall under their spell. I don't get it myself, but that's, that's what happens. And so when certain slurs are used, and the guy says, well, it's just a joke. It's just a joke. I'm afraid it isn't, man. It is racism. It's not that people can't take a joke. Anyone can take a joke if it's in good nature, you know? They really can. But a good friend of mine described it very, really well to me. It's like, if you use a slur or a stereotype against someone, even joking, let's say it's totally innocent. Some, it's not often, but sometimes it is, all right? Uh, 
what's their comeback? What's their comeback? If I was to use a racial slur against an Aboriginal person over here, what's their comeback? What racial slur could they use against me that would affect me? None. Because in society's terms, I have more power than they do. That's what it comes down to. They are disenfranchised. They've, had, you know, they, Aboriginals or you know, native people all over the world have had everything taken away from them. Everything taken away from them. And we use language partly to keep it that way, to make sure that there isn't a widespread compassion for people. Because if there's a widespread compassion for people, and the human race gets its shit together then people, these uh, people lose their power and that's the last thing they want. So they've got to keep dividing us to conquering us. Now, so when it comes to Rodrigo Bentancourt, um, I, based on one comment, I ain't going to judge the guy. I ain't going to judge the guy because there is a whole world of language out there and art, literature, fake science that has led to him thinking that that was okay to say. Just as we in England thought it was okay to have blackface candies for children. And what's really important I think is to, exp you know, just explain. I'm sure Rod, uh, look, if, uh, Let's, look, let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's just say he's not a racist. You know, he's, he's, I don't know if he's shown any signs of being racist, right? But I don't think he is, right? I'm sure once it's been explained to him that it was racist, he's probably feeling a little bit horrified and a bit gutted that he said something like that about Sun. And of course, you know, that stereotype of um, he, he said that uh, Koreans look the same, that, 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 that comes from us, you know? We didn't just conquer Africa, Austra and I'm talking about Britain here, we didn't just conquer and destroy Africa, the, uh, the uh, North America and Australia. We also had our fair, play, fair share to play in uh, Asia, the Asian region as well. And so part of being able to dehumanize people in certain parts of the world is to say seemingly innocuous things. They all look the same, don't they? In other words, they lack the intelligence or the capacity to be, to uh, to be individuals. They're just one homogenous group. It's the same here in Australia. When people talk about Aboriginal Australians, they tend to not recognise that there is not an Aboriginal person, if you know what I mean. All over the country before the invasion, many different nations, many different cultures, many different languages, many different ways of life. But somehow we lump it all in, we make it easy and palatable and just say, yeah, they're all the same, aren't they? So I think the way to deal with this is to explain. Just as in my life, when I've used terms and someone's explained to me uh, why that's not cool, I, I accept that. I accept it. You know, we're, we're not perfect. And like I say, this whole regime of racism, bigotry, purely came about purely came about to give power to the few. That's all it was, to give power to the few, to, to legitimise the, uh, the theft, murder, enslavement of other people around the world for our benefit. It had to be powerful for us to drop our empathy enough for, to do that. And like I say, my hope is that as, as we become, you know, more visible to each other, this kind of disappears a bit. It is powerful, it is brainwashing. And I think when someone realises they said something wrong, I think you just give them a chance, you know? Give them a chance. Um, you know, there's so much bullshit around race. There really is. Like I say, the, the, you know, there was pseudoscience, uh, eugenics attempts to say that people are, that look a certain way are inferior to others, they're less intelligent, more violent, more savage. Absolutely no scientific basis in that. In fact, did you know? Since the uh, Genome Project was com com uh, completed in the early 2000s, they discovered that we actually share 
pretty much all of our genetic material with every other person on the planet. You are just as likely to have two white people uh, more distantly genetically related than a white person and a Korean person. The cosmetic physical differences that have arisen around the world due to you know, different climates and things like that are such an insignificant part of what makes us human. The analogy would draw, I would draw is if we, if, we were, if we were all blind creatures and we used sonar, then racism would be based on something like the length of someone's middle finger. It is that insignificant. Um, so science, science has shown that we're, we're all the same. We're all the same. There are no differences at all. We all look different to each other. We all look, we all look unique. I mean, yeah, okay, you know, your skin colour is like an obvious one, but bloody hell, no one looks like me. No white person looks like me. I bloody well hope not. Anyway, poor bugger. Or good luck on them. Hope you're slaying the chicks. Um, so, yeah, geez, this is a bit... Well, um, you, know, and there's, you know, there's other things in the world, like, you know, the, 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 the big hoo-ha about trans people at the moment. Uh, and again, it's just picking on people using ignorance to dehumanise them. There is a, so much science and medical knowledge about, uh, about, about trans. There, there is actual facts out there. You might get told by twats on YouTube that, it's all, that, that there aren't, but there actually are. If you take the trouble to go and look at medical papers and research papers, as I've done, by the way, as I've done, there are thousands, thousands and thousands of peer-reviewed studies um, showing potentially some of the causes of it and also, more importantly, the eff efficacy of medical treatment to improve people's lives, you know? And what do we get told? That no, they're trying to brainwash our kids into being girls and all that crap. No, it's not, not at all. It's, it's, they have to be vocal. And I'm using trans as an example because really this is what happened with race, I, I'd say maybe 30 years ago. It's exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. Terms that we used that were acceptable uh, in, uh, as race, uh, they were racist back 30 years ago are not acceptable now. Not acceptable. In fact, it always makes me scratch my head. You can take the biggest racist person saying the biggest racist thing and you say, that's a bit racist. And they'll say, oh, you're trying to silence me. I'm not a racist. And my, 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 my response to that is, well, okay, you might not be a racist, but what, what, would, a ra would a racist person say the same thing as that, as you? And the answer is yes. And if you've got a, a bone of compassion in your body, you'd realise that you're saying the wrong thing and stop. So the same thing's going on with that. Now another term, another term, I, I mentioned grandfathered in, another term that has been absolutely corrupted. And look, I'm not talking about bloody left wing, left or right politics. I don't give a shit about politics, man. People in power to me are all the same. They're all the same. I don't care. Labour, Democrat, Liberal, Conservative, they're all assholes that just want power for themselves and manipulate the populace. Or, you know, communism, all, that. all of that, right? I'm not left or right. I'm talking about just basic human empathy for each other. That's all I'm talking about. To me, to me, standing up against bigotry, that's not being left wing, that's just being a bloody human being. That's having compassion, empathy for your fellow human being. That's not left wing, for fuck's sake. But the main, the, one of the big terms I'm hearing at the moment, woke, anti-woke agenda, or woke, this woke agenda. Woke, again, was born out of post-slavery United States, where, okay, even though slaves were emancipated and then locked up for vagrancy immediately and forced to work. So really slavery is still going on in the United States, as it is in Australia as well, by the way. Um, that 
because there was so much persecution, unjust persecution, and we acknowledge this is, a, this is a fact I'm talking about. This actually did happen. I'm not being some loony left here, you know. They did pass laws. They did lynch people over there, you know. Kill people. Um, that there was a, there was a, it started being used by, by black, Americans, the t uh, black Americans. We've got to stay woke. We've got to stay woke to this. We've got to stay woke to injustice. That's all it means, man. You know, there's a song, it, uh, I know, uh, Lead Belly, blues singer, in the 1930s, it's called, uh, I think it's called Six Boys from Scottsboro. I might have the place name wrong there. Uh, but it's a song about six uh, black kids that were lynched for a crime they didn't commit. And Lead Belly in that song says, we gotta stay woke. We gotta stay woke. So to me, you know, woke is just looking out for that sort of thing. And on a personal level, woke is also, you know, I'm open to, if, I'm, if I say something that someone regards as offensive, to me being human enough to think, okay, yeah, you know, society has brainwashed me on that one. Sorry about that, I won't say it again. No big deal. It's not curtailing my freedom of speech. I can still say billy bollocks and all sorts of shit. In fact, the people that say freedom of speech, you try and attack one of their icons and see how far your freedom of speech goes. You try and slag off the royal family or Winston Churchill or Donald Trump or, you know, any of these people, Tommy Robinson, they'll come down and you like a time, ton of bricks. They'll try and silence you. It's, it's, it appears to me that freedom of speech is a little bit hip, hip, hippocratic. Is that the right word? Double standards, double standards. And so this is a word, woke, that has now been demonised by these nutcases. Nutcases. The Nigel Farages of the world, man. And again, I'm not talking about right or left. I'm talking about fucking psychopaths, man. They've taken a word that meant to just watch out, watch out in these times for persecution to, to, and make it sound something weak, uh, something that's lunatic beyond all belief. And, now, and so it creates a culture war. And many people who I believe are not racist will say, woke culture. Well, now that I maybe explained a bit about what woke actually is, how do you feel about that, you know? Because that's what it is. And what these lunatics will often do to demonize, they'll pick a stupid example of something and say that that's what it is. Now, I won't go into details of that, but they always pick fringe examples. And if they can't find a fringe example, they'll just make something up. And it'll spread through the internet and people say, well, I saw on YouTube, I saw on Facebook, these woke people have done this, these woke people have done that. Most of the time, it's all bollocks. It's all bollocks. It's a grift. It's a con job. Like being uh, cancelled, cancel culture. A number of times I've seen a, a comedian moan about cancel culture in front of a 10,000 seat theatre. Oh yeah, you've been cancelled, mate. What, so one university didn't let you appear there and you've been silenced, it doesn't look like it, or I've been cancelled, here's my new book. And they make millions, man, they make millions. It's a machine. So you know what? You know, I hope, I hope, you know, I hope Rodri real, just realised he made a mistake. Made a mistake. And I don't think that people are out for blood generally. It's one thing that amazes me about Aboriginal people in Australia. And I've probably come into contact with more Aboriginal people than 99% of white people in Australia because uh, of the job I currently do. But uh, a few years ago, I used to do uh, uh, volunteer counselling work with a uh, men's group in Red Redfern. And I was amazed how, given their circumstance, they don't hate. They don't hate, man. It's not about revenge. It's not about hate. They just want it to stop. Stop being dicks to us for fuck's sake. That's all it is, they just want that to stop. Give us a chance. You know? That's human beings being human beings. You know? Revenge doesn't get you anywhere. It doesn't cure any ills. Anyway, I've gone on a bit. I don't know if I'll post this up. I'll have to have a listen to it, you know? So I've, I've meandered around a bit, but these are things that are really important to me. And like I say, I'm not, I'm not speaking to some perfect 
moral person. There's probably things I still say that in 20 years time will turn out to be, bloody hell, did I really say that? But I'm open to it because as we see more of each other, the mechanisms of these brainwashing, the use of language to keep people down and in their place diminishes. And that gives me a lot of hope for the future, folks. Peace and love, man, and come on you Spurs.